Right, moving along, we're getting some spray paint down on this cockpit area. Um, what I've done is I have nicely based um, our main fuselage section uh, with a nice aluminium colour, which what I personally used was um, Vallejo's new metal, metal colour range, which is 77701. Uh, um, really sort of nice natural metal finish that is in acrylic form really easy to slap that down as you can see looking rather cool uh, what we want to do is in the instructions there is uh, we've got to cut this bit cut it up a little bit um, now what i want to do and i want to be doing some chipping okay uh, i'm just going to sort of on the back of my hand um, sort of make this masking tape a little bit less tacky and following the instructions right we're going to sort of mask this up where it wants us to mask it up um, which is straight a nice straight line nice easy masking nothing too hard at all right let's make sure we get into all the, the nooks and crannies one either side so it just breaks this up rather nicely again check those instructions right and and then we've got this sort of all masked up. And I would say, I want to do a bit of chipping. I want to do a bit of cool chipping, actually, on this cockpit. So this here, um, current instructions, now needs to be sprayed um, our XF71, um, a nice cockpit green, um, really sort of cool color. We do want to sort of shake it up, mix it up, make sure we get it all sedimented off the bottom. But before we do that, what I want to do is I want to get some chipping. So I'm going to be going off and using some heavy chipping um, by Ammo, which is there, 2011. Um, what you do with this, uh, first off, we need to um, actually put this into our airbrush, right? So we're just going to pour a nice amount into the airbrush and we're going to now apply this to the area we just sort of masked up, right? I mean, we don't want to be getting it onto um, our aluminium bits, but you know, it doesn't really matter because it is clear and transparent. Right, and what we're going to do, we're just going to spray this right on top of our aluminium. Now it's important that we did our aluminium first right um, because when we do this chipping uh, when we chip away at our XF 71 um, we want to see aluminium underneath our XF 71 so that's why we put our um, aluminium on first we apply a coat of our chipping cut to air let it sort of dry off right and then we want to add on maybe another, you know, in all together, about two to three coats. So once that has dried, as soon as that's dried, we want to apply um, the colour what we want to be putting on top. Um, this isn't something that you can, you know, spray your chipping on and then tomorrow, you know, go off, put your top coat on and start chipping. It has to be, as soon as it's dried, uh, we whack this on. So. We're just going to now be applying um, XF71 uh, cockpit green just on top. Now, you can mask the rest of um, your model if you so wish so you don't get overspray. But if you're feeling competent enough to just you know, spray this on without getting the overspray, which is all about just getting your angles right. And then we can sort of get this mostly down right and we're just after at the moment just getting some some good coverage just covering basically all the model right and then as soon as um, we've got good coverage and as soon as that's dried we move along with the next part so with that now all down and it's basically all dry and we can remove our masking tape just to sort of reveal our work a bit right nice and easy 
there we go and then what you want is you need to sort of hydrate the area so getting out um, it depends on the brush right I mean you could use a little brush um, with soft bristles and you sort of lightly um, start chipping it up you could get a really sort of um, sort of hard brush maybe like this one here um, with really sort of hard bristles and you could really sort of scratch at it um, I like to just use a bit of an old brush that's just you know sort of soft bristles you know soft bristles this but it's sort of nice and old we dip that into some water and basically paint it all over where we've just applied our interior green right and then what we can start to do is we start sort of aggravating the area right so maybe sort of start brushing a bit harder hopefully as you can see um, it is it is a lot to do with your pressure how sort of um, you know you as I've just mentioned with like how tough or you know your bristles are how stiff they are depends upon how much it starts to sort of come away how long you brush that area for right and in some ways as well I mean how many coats you put on I mean if we sort of maybe put like one coat of this on um, well sort of one coat of our chipping effects on it'd be sort of harder to sort of brush at it if we put maybe you know a load of coats on you know it really can sort of work a bit more so we can sort of just rub at this just lightly right you really don't need to sort of go too far with it right and as you can see I mean that's sort of really sort of chipping that up um, we can sort of add scratches with cocktail sticks right so I always like to bite the end so it makes the wood a bit softer right so it doesn't sort of you know scratch into your paintwork too much right and we can just sort of do little sort of scratches with this right as you can see we can get scratches going on in there and that sort of thing and really it just makes it so much easier to like chip these areas up maybe if we want to get like finer scratches we can come in with like blades and stuff and just lightly sort of scratch along if we can like so um, there is another product um, just up here right because there are two we've got scratching effects and we've got heavy um, scratching uh, chipping effects um, basically you know the heavy one is stronger obviously and as you can see we can really sort of chip away at that whereas the scratching effects is sort of a little bit weaker um, and you sort of have to work a little bit harder to sort of get the scratches in there um, and that way you sort of get lighter scratches um, it is sort of down to personal preference so I'm now going to sort of do this process on the rest of the pieces so I've moved along a bit now and hopefully as you can see I've basically got all our base colours down with that bit of chipping going on there. Um, we want to sort of weather this up and sort of uh, bring detail to the foreground, liven it up, make it more realistic. Uh, but before we do that, because uh, the weathering products I'm going to be using is things like enamel products, filters, washes, that kind of stuff. So what we want to do, we just want to save our work with um, by using a gloss coat we want to save it so as if we make any mistakes with weathering because we've got a gloss coat on there we can pretty much nine times out of ten wipe away what weathering we've done and just basically bring it back to these base colors um, so what i'm going to be using is ak interactives intermediate agent um, really cool product it is probably the most recommended um, gloss paint that you that i would recommend it really um, it's just like that floor cleaner but better it gives a much more um, better sort of shine enhancement to it makes it more glossy really sort of cool um, so we're just going to start by getting this sprayed up now you could just pour this straight in right there's no need to do any thinning or mixing All right so it's nice quick and easy um, and then we're just going to spray this um, or on our model like so and just get it all on there 
as you can see I have been putting this together and it is starting to look good um, one of the things for putting these gloss coats on as well is it protects um, your paintwork and very much so when it comes to using Tamiya paints because you've only got to just slightly nick it with your nail and it scratches pretty pretty easy but once you've got a gloss coat on you know it does go nice as hard as nails now we don't have to go off and do loads and loads of gloss coats uh, and really build it up you know you know sort of two light misty coats should just get it nicely enough for um, the weathering um, and you could probably leave it overnight to play it safe but probably in half an hour I'm going to just start whacking on um, our uh, enamel products so with that dry then what we want to do is we want to start adding some weathering um, to our pieces here now what we're going to do we're going to add a filter um, the filter I'm going to be using um, is I'm going to be using um, the well this is a panel line wash actually a deep brown um, panel line wash which is MIG 1618 and also MIG Jimenez's um, blue for dark grey which is 1509 um, as much as you could say these are two different products they are very much still the same they are basically thinned down enamel paints but thinned down um to the right sort of consistency so that you can you know use it for whatever job it's used for uh, but i tend to find that these panel line washes and the filters are you know very similarly fill um thinned down so you can use them um, pretty much for both the same applications so for this um i'm going to apply a filter um, now when you apply filter filters all about um, getting an equal film an equal glaze all over the piece that includes flat surfaces recesses raised areas uh, absolutely everywhere it's not about pooling it up into like recessed panel lines or raised areas um, to bring the detail out it's all about giving everything an equal amount of the filter however in saying that as much as that's how we use them that's not how I'm going to be using these um, for this so um, what we've got here we've got this nice big piece we're not going to see pretty much hardly any of this area here or even this area down here so it's a good um, place to sort of practice um, what you're about to do so you need to give these a good shake and make sure you get everything that that's sedimented off of the bottom then what I'm going to do I'm going to because this is a nice big area to sort of practice on um, we're just getting a big um, number eight flat brush and that's by AK interactive right these are you know good paint brushes for using these enamel products we're just going to dip in and we only need to you know get a little bit on the end of our brush we really don't need a lot at all and what we're going to do we're going to just carefully paint this on right maybe a little bit more than that though we're going to carefully paint it on right so as we get it as equal as possible all the way around so as you can see i'm sort of brush painting it on and brushing it on just to try and get it as equal as possible now there is two stages to this it might pull up in like some areas and also you might even notice some brush strokes going on but we don't need to worry about that because there is a clean up stage after this right and this being a nice dark blue when it's finished it will sort of bring out our natural metal finish because a, a nice dark blue is always a nice for using our natural metal finishes right now what you want to do you want to sort of let this dry now because we are sort of going to be having this sort of sharp hard sort of finish here right so it's best to sort of let that dry before we move on to the next color but i'm kind of okay with just carrying on with this just to show you so we come in with now our um, deep brown this is going to be good for all our green areas to sort of darken them all up but what you want to get out is some enamel odorless thinners by ammo and that's just to clean our brush off right because it's going to have all this blue going on there so we just dip that in clean it off until our paintbrush is no longer producing any sort of 
nasty blue that we don't want to be mixing. All right, so let's bring out our deep brown. All right, and this should be quite cool. Put that out the way, move that there. But again, same sort of um, application process. All right, we want to dip in to our pot here. And then we want to sort of paint this on. And hopefully you can see that it's going to be a really sort of nice colour to darken things up, make things look a little bit dirty. All right. But as I say, with filters, you want to make sure it's nice and even all over and not go into all the recesses. However, with this one, I want to sort of paint it all over, but let some of it go into, you know, the recesses and everything. So it sort of will act like a, a filter, but also like a wash, and it will bring out all our detail at the same time. Um, now that might not look um, as good as we may want it because we might have like bits of, hopefully you can just see there, there's like maybe some little blobby areas or some brush stroke areas. You know, we don't want that, but because these are enamels, we can clean up um, all this later on quite easily. Um, so what you want to do now is just let that sort of dry for maybe 15, 20 minutes because it's enamels. Enamels normally take, you know, hours and hours to dry or even days to dry. Um, but by leaving it for half an hour, it just sort of almost becomes touch dry, um, which then allows us to be able to rehydrate it very easily and play around with it, which is what we're going to do next. So that's now had some time to dry. Um, and what you will notice is, you know, we do have like a few little blotches here and there, which makes it look a little bit unneat, you know, and we've got some like brush strokes along here. This is where we sort of tidy it up and we get it the way we want it. So getting out <coughs> um, some enamel odorless thinners, which by the way, I did forget to mention, I did use for our black bits, I did use a bit of a different color um, because with um, our deep brown here and our um, uh, blue for dark gray here, they're dark, dark colors, which just doesn't sort of bring out uh, our black background. So I used um, gray for white, which is um, Amos 1501. And that brings out all our black areas that little bit better. Uh, but again, we still need to come back with um, our enamel odorless thinners. We're going to get out a smaller paintbrush, um, although in these big areas, right, because this big area is a nice sort of example to sort of show you, um, and a kitchen paper towel. What we're going to do, just going to dip into our enamel odorless thinners, and then we're just going to sort of touch kitchen paper towel. What this basically does is makes our paintbrush moist but not soaking with thinners. And what we're going to do, we're just sort of going to stub this down now, so we're just going to brush onto it and hopefully you can sort of see that we're removing, we're basically rehydrating and removing our um, filter that we put on there and it's neatening it up. Our brush now would probably be a little bit sort of, um, got a bit of filter on there so we can clean that off, dip into our enamel odorless thinners, you know, clean it up and just make sure our brush is nice and moist so then we can sort of keep moving along cleaning it up stubbing it down where it needs it right and sort of what i wanted to do is sort of make our flat areas just be sort of lightly um as you can see lightly have our filter on there but we sort of leave it a little bit in our um nooks and crannies, recesses, raised areas, and hopefully as you can see, you know, it just brings them out just that little bit, brings it to the foreground a bit, weathers it up. Um, same with any other area, you know, just on here we've got sort of like all these sort of nasty blotches and stuff. We can just rehydrate and see how easily we rehydrate. That's the cool thing about enamels, you know, they take a fair bit of time to dry, which means they rehydrate so nicely that we can just you know clean any nasties up 
And not only that, it's sort of like, we're not just cleaning it up, we're sort of stubbing it down, thinning it, feathering it, and sort of blending that in, that a little bit nicer. And hopefully as you can see, that just tidied it up. And then we could sort of come in maybe a smaller paintbrush now, now that we're sort of coming into some more detailed areas. And sort of, we can just sort of stub that down and clean up any nasty blotches that you don't like. And I'm just trying to leave it also in all those um, nooks and crannies and raised areas. And you just nicely just go around the model, just rehydrating and just tidying it up and getting it the way you wanted it, stubbing it down, making it look that nice bit more professional. And then once you've um, gone around doing all that, let it dry. You could come back, give it, say, another application if you want, of stubbing it down, depending on how it dries. You can get out cotton wool buds as well if you want. So maybe just here we've got, um, you know, as you can see, maybe it's not looking just the way you want it. So again, dip it into the enamel and thinners, roll it onto a kitchen paper towel just so it's just moist and we can just clean up you know, where it's sort of gone, where you don't want it. You know, maybe on these top raised bits, we can sort of tidy that up. All right, and you basically just nicely sort of, you know, leave it sort of nicely where you want it, recessed areas, thinned out on the flat areas. Um, and basically, I'm just going to go off and get all that done. And I'm going to see how it looks. I mean, we could go off, we could bring in a wash and sort of bring out uh, more detail areas a little bit more we may want to put some pigments down depending but I'm just going to see how this turns out once I've done it